organic climbing cycle, as we know, is similar to the cycle of conventional plant with water as uh, working fluid, but the difference between conventional and our ORC uh, system is uh, working fluid. As I say, in organic ripe cycle we have organic fluid uh, with boiling point, which is lower uh, than the uh, boiling point of uh, water, of course at the same pressure, and uh, the lower temperatures of boiling points means uh, that we can use uh, heat sources with uh, lower uh, temperatures uh, for also okay for uh, for electricity production, and that means we can use biomass, industrial waste heat, or geothermal uh, energy, maybe solar energy, uh, and etc. A typical range of temperatures. Uh, of heat sources uh, for those ORC systems is 80 to 140 Celsius degrees. This is typical range. But some manufacturers uh, give us a uh, range from 60 to 350 Celsius degrees. Um, sorry. Uh, in this uh, slide, we can see schematic presentation of this system, and uh, we can see it's the same as conventional system, but the temperature differences and working fluid is uh, different. Um, selection of the working fluid, because our we, because we have lower temperatures here, is a crucial thing in. Uh, these uh, kind of systems. Because we have lower temperatures, uh, the, pro uh, the, the problem uh, could be uh, with uh, heat exchange, because it can be really inefficient. And because of that, we need to uh, pay attention of thermal, uh, on thermal, sorry, and physical characteristics of organic fluids. And of course, on working conditions. It may happen that at the end of process in turbine, uh, we have uh, superheated vapor, and then we can use it to um, preheat, if I may say that, to preheat or to heat uh, for heating of uh, liquid fluid entering the steam generator. Uh, of course, I didn't say that uh, we can use, of course, uh, an extra uh, heat exchanger. We call it. It's good to use fluid with a large latent heat uh, and also with high density. Uh, the freezing temperature of that fluid need to be lower than the lowest operating temperature in the cycle and also the maximum uh, maximal, uh, maximum temperature uh, of heat source uh, is uh, determined uh, by a chemical stability of cho uh, chosen fluid and um, of course fluid need to be uh, environmentally friendly uh, uh, cheap or uh, also um, uh, acceptable with expect, uh, sorry, accepta acceptable working pressures. Uh, and it uh, shouldn't be uh, corrosive, flammable, or toxic. And we, we can see here the most commonly uh, used fluids here. Um, it's really important to know the slope uh, of uh, saturated vapor uh, curve, uh, and um, we can dis distinguish uh, three types of fluids. Uh, if we have a positive slope of this curve, we can speak about dry fluids. If we, of course, I speak uh, about slope in TS or temperature uh, 
entropy diagram. If the slope of that saturated vapor curve is uh, positive, uh, sorry, negative, we have wet fluids. And if we have vertical line of that saturated uh, vapor, we can speak about uh, isentropic fluids. If uh, we have supercritical cycle, if the fluid is too dry, uh, the vapor at the end of uh, processing turbine can be superheated. That means that we have additional cooling load to the condenser. And also, uh, it could be a problem if we don't have high enough temperature at the end uh, at the enter of turbine, uh, because the process can uh, can enter into uh, two uh, phase uh, region. If we have uh, wet fluids or fluids with, neg with negative slope of saturated vapor line, uh, the superheating uh, has to be done of the vapor at the enter of turbine because we need to avoid uh, two-phase region. Uh, so we can see it on this diagram. At the left side of uh, slide, it's we're talking about dry fluids, and at the right side, the right side of slide, we talk about uh, wet fluids. As you can see, uh, it's uh, the main. Uh, it's uh, we need to uh, to uh, avoid two phase reach. For our calculations, we use geothermal water from locality Vranska Banja, that is a spa in Serbia, with the highest measured temperature of uh, geothermal water of uh, 96 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, we used uh, 20 kilograms per second for our uh, calculations, but we had uh, available 77 kilograms per second from this water. Uh, the rest of the water is used for uh, industrial processes uh, or balneology or agricultural uh, and maybe residential heating. This is our system and uh, using this diagram of the right side of the slide, the temperature entropy diagram, we can calculate heat submitted uh, by the geothermal source and given to uh, our working fluid. Also, we can calculate power obtained uh, from the turbine and also power for, the, for running the pump. And the mass flow of the working fluid. Of course, uh, for these calculations further, we need isotropic efficiency of turbine and also of uh, pump, and we, uh, we adopted those values, and we can calculate entropy of state point two and five on the type, type uh, of the TS diagram, sorry, and also, the thermodynamic efficiency of this cycle. We adopted that we have a, a geothermal uh, water temperature at the exit of a generator of uh, 80 Celsius degrees, and we adopted a cooling water temperature of 20 Celsius degrees. Um, also, the evaporation and condensing temperatures were 74 Celsius degrees and uh, 28 Celsius degrees. And the temperature at the exit of superheater or uh, superheated vapor temperature before entering the, uh, the turbine is 84 degrees. Uh, the working fluid, I forgot, the working fluid uh, was chosen to be uh, R245FA. We got 
from our calculations, turbine power. And it was 260 kilowatts. And if we compare this value, uh, which, we, which we got with a uh, conversional system with steam uh, turbine and uh, fire and coiled uh, fire uh, boiler, we can get uh, savings in uh, annually uh, coil consumption, and it was around uh, two point six uh, thousands of tons of coil per year. And also, that means that we can uh, get uh, nearly 2.3 thousands of tons of CO2, uh, which wouldn't be emitted to the atmosphere per year. So, it's good uh, to use these systems for produ uh, producing electricity when you have decentralized heat sources. And because of the lower temperatures we can use uh, in this system, it's good to use uh, waste heat or maybe renewable heat sources um, because also we have uh, savings or reduction of CO2 and savings in uh, using fossil fuels. Uh, also, if we have higher temperatures of geothermal or heat source, uh, as high as possible, uh, we can get more efficiency, thermodynamic efficiency of the cycle. So, um, thank you for your attention.